All right, so this is the tenth problem of the grind 75. This is a maximum subarray. We are given 20 minutes for this problem, and so we'll start the countdown now. So let's actually go there. Okay, maximum subarray. Looks like it's a medium now, but it used to be an easy. So given an integer array nums, find the contiguous subarray containing at least one number, which has the largest sum and return its sum. A subarray is continuous is a continuous part of an array. So what that means is that it has to be one value right after the other. Um, subarray and then subset. So subarray would be like a slice of the array. So like if this is the array, a subarray would be this, but a subset of this array could be an array of this value, this value, and that value. They don't have to be in the same order or next to each other, but we are dealing with a sub, sub array, which means they are right next to each other. Okay, so and we want to find the contigu contiguous sub array, which has the largest sum. Okay, so this to me, this seems like a sort of sliding window kind of thing. Um, but the sum can be any number of uh, digits. So, hmm. That's, this is sort of interesting. So how will we, so again, sliding window is the first thing that comes to mind. So that typically involves two pointers. Um, we will, not worrying about space or time, I'm thinking we would just add things, numbers as we go to some collection of some kind, probably an array list to maintain order. However, would it even need to be an array list? Could we just add it to a set and move on? If so, let's see, if we were to exhaust every possible combination, we could start off with a pointer at negative two and a pointer at negative or at one, to use this example extend this pointer all the way out, and then increment this pointer by one, extend it all the way out. So again, that'd be an n squared type of operation. So is there a faster way? If you have figured out the O of n solution, try coding another solution using the divide and conquer approach, which is more subtle. Hmm. Well, what would be the O of n solution? Um, so let's say we have a pointer here and a pointer here, current sum is negative 1, extend the pointer, current sum is negative 4, extend the pointer, current sum is 0, extend, it's negative 1, hmm, at what point should we extend the Part of the array so it seems like so any positive number is going to i guess positively contribute to the sum it's going to increase it so at any point that there's a negative number we are going to probably my first thought is you would want to exclude it but if it's small then it might actually be beneficial to keep it negative two one negative three oh that's not good but it still is very possible that that would be the best case. Well, let me see. Not true. So if we have a positive number like one, even though it's small, if all of our negative numbers have a greater magnitude, I guess absolute value, than our largest positive number, then we know we're going to want to ditch it. So, I'm just going to write that down. If negative 
the number has greater magnitude than current sum, then ditch it. So negative two, we're gonna move on to one. I would move the back pointer up and then see we have negative three and then keep going. See we have four. I one, four, negative three. It still gives us two, which could easily be greater. Then we're gonna move on to negative one which would make it even smaller. So do we move the back pointer as soon as our sum, total sum is a net of zero, is that, or it's below zero, is that the case? So two pointers here, that one's below zero, so we're gonna move it up. And it's also below zero, so we're gonna move it up. We go here to four, that's not below zero. Above zero. Also, so what are we actually, oh, we are gonna have to return an integer array. At least one number, which has the largest sum. Well, we're going to have to build the array too, so we're going to have to think of a good way to do that. Build the array, because we can't just take a slice like we can in Python. And we can make an array list, and then from there, add it to the array. That would, I guess, technically be constant. But I'm still not getting the main piece of this problem. It seems like an O of n solution is possible. So just to get the ball rolling in some sort of direction, if nums.length is less than one, then we're just going to return nums less than or equal to one. Let's see. It's definitely sliding window of some kind because we have to get the sub array. I want to know exactly what divide and conquer is. I guess we'll find out later. Um, some way to do this recursively? Probably not. I, mean, I don't really see how we would do that using a hash map of some kind, keep track of values. So what I'm lost at is when to move the pointers. I sort of know that we can, hmm. are the integers unique? No, they're not even necessarily unique. So I wouldn't have to add each integer to a hash map either. Hmm. Let's see. 2, 1, negative 3, 4, 1, 2, 1. When do we move the pointers? That is the question that I would love to be able to answer. So we can't just move as soon as we dip below the current maximum. Um, we still might be able to gain an even greater value by moving farther on. However, that greatest value could be greater if we were to remove some of those negative values. So we want the longest string of positive integers and least amount of negative integers. I mean, so I'm going to, if I were to do this manually, 
I'm again look, going to look at example one because it seems to be a good sized example. Um, negative two, one, we already know one would be greater than our current sum. So we're going to move those pointers. We're going to move negative three up. Yeah, okay, so one is has a smaller magnitude than negative three. So we do we know that we for sure will not want that? Not necessarily because if it were to end at that point, if it was just negative two, one, negative three, then uh, an array that looks like that would be what we would return. But as soon as we hit a large positive value like that, so, okay. It's not really the maximum value though. Negative one, okay, two, one. Okay, but we have a four there, and that's something that seems like we, we would want, but that negative five, takes away from that. It means it's something that would be greater than. It says find the contiguous subarray. So if technically this was a positive five, okay, so there's only gonna be one. We can be sure of that just by the subtle wording of this problem, find the contiguous array, subarray. Mm, but I'm still trying to figure out the right way to do this. So if we're to keep our, say like the global max, see, but then we have that, and it'd still be best to just sum everything up. Okay, so I think, so we're going to, say we start subtracting, so we have negative two. As soon as we hit the zero, the net value in between the negatives and the positives, then maybe we wanna start recording. So maybe that's where we would put our first pointer. Put forced first pointer at net zero value. So here our total is two, or negative two. So we already know we're going to move on from that. Um, negative one, or positive one is there. And then we know that our next value is negative three. So then we're going to dip down to negative two. And then we're going to rise back up to four. Does it work to move on as soon as we dip? Oh, hold on. One, negative three, negative four. If this was just the array right here, if this right here, one, dip down by negative three and then go up by four. Um, that would mean that we have positive two, but we would be better off if we just had four. Okay, so from that case alone. So I guess more accurately, as soon as we dip below zero, um, move up front pointer. Okay, so let's say we keep that logic. Less than or equal to two return nums, so that means we're gonna have minimum of size two. First pointer is gonna start off at zero, second pointer is gonna start off at one. Um, 
I think we're going to do a for loop for the second pointer. Uh, let's see. So let's say, let's initialize. So int front pointer is going to be equal to zero. Int back pointer is going to be equal to one. And we're gonna say, let's say while Um, let's say, well, front pointer is less than or equal to uh, it's less than or equal to nums dot length. We are going to want to keep going. So we're also going to want to have some, I guess, a total. And we can call it sum as well. Do we want to declare this out here? Maybe just. can actually just do it here. So let's say int sum is equal to nums at front pointer plus nums at back pointer. And we're going to say if sum is less than zero. Is that right? Zero, less than zero, greater than zero? See, but if we have an array of only negative numbers, it shouldn't be just zero, it should be some type of minimum. Some type of minimum. How do we establish what the minimum is? Like the greatest minimum. So I guess it should actually be some sort of maximum. Uh, okay, let's just call it int maximum is equal. math.max Okay, I'm just going to set it I'm just going to do an if statement and maximum is declared if nums Front pointer is equal to back pointer greater than nums back pointer. Then we're going to want to return or set maximum equal to front pointer else we're going to want to set it equal to maximum equal to nums back pointer front pointer plus back pointer if sum is less than Okay, um, one plus comes 
Um, we have just a couple seconds left. Um, I will probably stop here, work out the solution on my own. Um, we never seem to get the key insight into this problem. And looking at the example and trying to solve it manually didn't help us in any way. Um, so we're just going to stop here.